So I thought we'd run through the construction of a bleaching tray so that uh, if patients are going to be bleaching their teeth that we minimise any side effects of the chemical that's being used to bleach teeth. Um, and the way that we're going to construct this is a, uh, in a manner such that you can reuse the model for other, for other um, purposes, either as a study model, but it can remain uh, with you in your surgery. So to do that, um, I've got a standard uh, a practice model here, and we're going to pretend that this patient requires bleaching all of the way around, just so that we get the idea of how to uh, effectively apply uh, the, the spacer and so on. The material that I'm going to use to con to, uh, as a spacer is called Thermo Wax. Now this wax uh, is available from several companies, but it's a high temperature wax that doesn't distort when we're adapting the heated blank later on. Okay, um, Some of the products that are produced are, are, are resin based and uh, we found that the problem with those resin based ones is that of course once you place them on the model you can't remove that effectively without damaging the model so then that model is a one use model just for the bleaching tray. This way the Thermomax can be boiled off and uh, we can carry on and use the model say to make a mouth guard or just as a study model for other purposes or simply to keep for our records. So, we're going to take the thermo wax and then we're going to apply it to our model. So, I like to use a large instrument. I use the, my large wax knife because it carries the heat better with the thermo wax, which is a slightly higher temperature wax. If I was to use my Lacron or a smaller wax knife, they don't carry the heat as well and this material requires the, uh, slightly more heat than a modelling wax. So. We heat our wax, we simply take a portion of it and introduce it into the centre of the tooth, like so, and then we're going to just run it right out and we get it as close as we can to where we want the bleaching to occur. Now obviously I'm working on a molar here and most patients would not want bleaching right back that far and the general rule would be that we only bleach where where, we, where we've discussed with the patient or, um, or where the you as a practitioner expect that you would like to, to um, bleach those teeth. Can you see how I've just carried it over the incisal uh, area? That's an assessment that's going to be made by you and the, and the patient as to where, how far you carry it over. On some uh, anterior teeth, you might want to carry it further over the incisal if there's incisal uh, staining. But in the main, what we're trying to do is provide a reservoir of the chemical because once this chemical hits the, the, um, the tooth, if, it's, if there's not a reservoir of the chemical that can be circulated around by the action of the lip or, or slight movements in, in the mouth, then it's going to be less effective. So uh, the idea is to have a reservoir of material here. This is about a millimetre or a millimetre and a half thick. We have the reservoir of material so it remains active for longer just with the action of the lip while the patient's wearing this. Now what we're trying to do here is prevent damage to the oral mucosa. Many of you will have seen the aggravated appearance of, of the soft tissue when this chemical is, is uh, uh, held against the soft tissue for any period of time. So for, by making the reservoir actually not join in between the teeth and being just short of the gingiva, then we minimise the amount of chemical, active chemical that's going to be held against the gingiva and that would be our purpose in creating a bleaching tray because uh, a lot of these patients don't understand or don't uh, take heed of the instructions that go with the chemical and, and if, um, if one minute is going to uh, going to make your teeth whiter by half a shade then 24 hours sleeping in the guard is going to do it that much better and that's the that's the way some patients might think and and not realize that if you're sleeping with the um, with the bleaching tray in your mouth then you're going to do some damage to the soft tissue I have seen extreme damage to uh, to the gingiva area that's taken quite a while to recover uh, with some patients who, who have worn the bleaching chemical in their mouth for too long, count it 
I'm sure, to the instructions of their, of their practitioner. So you can see that I'm not going right into the interproximal, I'm applying the wax like so, and then just working it out towards the edge. So this is not to say that the whitening systems like Zoom and the others aren't, aren't effective. I'm, I'm just offering an alternative here for people who have decided to offer a bleaching tray and some chemical for their patients to lighten the colour of their teeth. And this is the most effective way for you to produce that, minimising the chemical effect on your, on your patient. Okay, here we are with the pressure laminating machine. Um, a little trick when you're pressure laminating is to make sure that you use uh, the table. If you've got a low model, you can just sit your model on there and then the blank is, uh, is not going to pull too thin. If you have a tall model like I have now, but you want to preserve the height of it for some other reason, as a study model like we would with this one, then you can just remove the table here like so, place the model in here, and then use some of this plastic um, beading that's usually provided with, by the companies with their, um, with their machine. And that's going to mean that the blank doesn't have to be stretched as far, so you'll end up with a nice thick blank, uh, but be able to preserve the height of your model. Otherwise, if you don't have uh, the ability to do this, you might have to reduce the height of your model on the grinding machine so that you don't pull the blank too thin, okay? Or choose a, a thicker blank. I would prefer to use uh, this one, the half mil blank, and then just use this bead to stop the, the distance that the blank has to be stretched. So we're just going to put that like that and then sit this into here. As long as this area where it seals is not covered by the by the material we're going to get a nice adaption there. so we take our blank we sit it on the table we put the ring in place like so and then I've set the heater on this machine to one uh, minute and five seconds depending on your machine you look up the specifications if you have an automatic machine that has a barcode then you swipe it and you go with the specifications so we're going to heat this now for a minute and five Uh, and when we get this uh, blank to the to the right consistency if you have a, a manual machine and you want to test whether it's right what you're going to feel for is when the blank starts to sag and you can just feel out the outside rim here that the blank becomes a little bit sticky you get that's a fair enough indication the blank will adapt with some accuracy around the, the uh, interproximal areas. The general rule for cooling is that once the, we have adapted this, you will cool it for the same length of time as you've heated it for. So if we're heating it for one minute and five seconds, we're going to let it cool for one minute and five seconds. You can see how the blank is starting to get quite, quite floppy. We got seven seconds to go. And now that uh, will cool for one minute and five. Minute, we're going to release the pressure. Swing out our model, and there we oh, there we have our bleaching tray adapted. And you can see how it's adapted into the proximal areas all the way around. Okay. One of the things that we don't want to do now is invert this to pull it off. If you do that, we stretch it in the areas where we need it to fit best 
on the tooth before it gets to the gingiva and and we defeat the purpose of constructing this the way we have so we want to pull this off in this manner here loosening it there and there and then lift it off in the direction of the path of insertion or extraction okay so we avoid stretching the guard so now we're at the stage where we need to um, uh, trim the guard so i'm just going to Give that a little squeeze and those last little bits of thermo wax have gone you can see how clear and clean this is and then we can go and boil this model off where we like when we're trimming this the trick is to turn it over so that we're looking at the inside of the of the uh, blank and when you do that you can see the sharp edge of where it's adapted in around the gingiva so i like to take a pair of small scissors like this that have a curve on them and we're simply going to go in and cut it with the scissors and we're going to cut that just about a millimeter over the gingiva remember looking on the inside rather than trying to look from the outside where it's not as clear to see so looking on the inside and we're going to cut that like so and if we go into the interproximal area we can just give it that last little clip and it clips out nicely like so the other trick is that if you want a nice smooth finish is not to close your scissors out so see how i'm not bringing the points together until i get to where i want to end it into proximally and that's when i close my scissors out then i come from the other direction and i'm going to cut it in this way and again i'm not going to cut it out close my scissors out until i actually get right into the area where I want to end the cut and there it is right there and I can close it out and that way I don't end up with lots of little jagged ragged ragged edges over the years we've tried using a heated scalpel we've tried using a burr a mop all different things to cut this and the most successful consistent result that you can get is learning how to cut with a nice pair of sharp scissors you end up with a very very good finish to the periphery and no little jagged edges your blanks look nice and clean easy for the patient to keep clean and it takes little time so we're going to go around and trim not just the labial surface where the bleaching is taking place but we're also going to trim very accurately on the palatal side in, in exactly the same way because we want to limit any chemical that does happen to, to escape and get through into proximally we want to limit the damage to the soft tissue so we're going to make this as short as we can all the way around so I'm going to go ahead and do that now so there we have it I've trimmed uh, completely around scalloped around following the gingiva remember the purpose is to limit this chemical burn to the uh, oral mucosa quite often practitioners are dispensing a chemical that is stronger than that can be bought in the chemist shop or one of the commercial varieties so it behoves us to make sure that that chemical doesn't do damage bearing in mind that patients don't always follow the right instructions so here we have it nicely fitting bleaching tray not stretched seating right against the gingiva and going to be the most effective way to carry chemical to the surface of the teeth